This video explains how to use the approx and approx fun interpolation functions using the R programming language. So without much talk, let's dive into the R code. In the first example of this tutorial, I will show you the basic application of the approx function. And for this, we first need to specify two different data points stored in an x variable and in a y variable, as you can see in lines two to six of the code. So after running line two of the code, you can see that a new data object called x1 is appearing at the top right. And this data object contains the values zero and five. And then in line five of the code, we can create another data object, which is called y1. And this data object contains the values zero and 10. Now, if we apply the approx function to these two data objects, as you can see in line eight of the code, we can create a new data set, which contains points that linearly interpolate the points between the starting point zero, zero and the finishing point five, 10. So after running this line of code, you can see that a new data set is appearing at the top right, which is called data approx one. And we can print this data set below in the RStudio console by running line nine of the code. And then you can see that our data set is actually a list object. And this list object contains X values and Y values that range from the starting points in X zero and five and the starting points in Y zero and 10. Now, if we draw these data in a plot, you can see how these points are distributed. And we can do that as you can see in lines 11 to 15. So in lines 11 and 12, I'm using the plot function to draw a scatter plot of our data. So as you can see, our scatter plot shows a linear relationship between the points in X and Y. And then we can add the two starting points and the two finishing points in the variables X and Y1 using the points function in a different color. So after running these lines of code, you can see that our first point zero, zero is at the bottom left of the plot and the last point five, 10 is at the right side of the plot. And the points in between have been created by the approx function. Now we can make this example more complex by adding more points between which we want to add linearly distributed values. As you can see in the next example, starting in line 17 of the code. So in lines 17 to 21, I'm creating two further X and Y variables. And as you can see, these variables contain four points instead of only two points. So after running these lines of code, the two variables X2 and Y2 are created. And these variables contain the values 0, 5, 10, 15, and the corresponding Y values 0, 10, 100, and 1000. Now, once again, we can apply the approx function to these two variables, as you can see in line 23 of the code. And then in line 24 of the code, I'm printing the corresponding data set. So as you can see, once again, we have created a list which contains X values and Y values. Now, if we draw these values, as we did in the previous example, you can see the difference in the plot on the bottom right. So as you can see, this time we have created four points. And between those points, we have added linearly distributed points using the approx function. So the more points you add within the approx function, the more different linear relationships within your plot are shown. So until now, I have only explained how to use the approx function. However, there's also another function which is called approx fun. And this function can be used to create a user defined function as you can see in line 32 of the code. So in this line of code, I'm creating a user defined function based on our two input variables x2 and y2. So after running line 32 of the code, you can see at the top right of our studio that a new function object called my approx fun is created. And then in the next step, we can use the plot function to draw our data once again. 
And on top of that, we can use the curve function in combination with our user defined function that we have created in line 32 to add a curve. So after running lines 35 and 36 of the code, you can see that a line is added between our points. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.